Welcome to edition 49 of All Killer No Filler podcast with me, Rachel Fairburn and Kim Pritchard McLean. Just before we start, we'll do our usual disclaimer. This isn't hero worship. We do this podcast because we have a mutual interest in serial killers. And as long as we are doing this podcast, it stops us from writing to them in prison. When I do that now, I expect the audience to join in because we've had such great live shows. I nearly shows. joined in. I nearly Did joined you? in on the end. Yeah, yeah. I nearly got swept away with it. Thanks to everyone that's been coming to the live shows in Edinburgh. Oh, it's been banging. We thought we'd do... Well, every time we do like live stuff, they sit us down and they expect... They go, this is what we expect to get. This is how many, you know, like to break even. Mm. And I think that they expected like... They were like, well, let's go in a big venue and, you know, let's hopefully get like 200. So the first one had like 300 and mm-hmm. something in. And the last one was sold out. Yeah. Which is 410 people. Brilliant. Which is absolutely mad. Smashing. Thank you so much to all of you. Yeah, the next one is like four or five days away. That's probably got less than 100 tickets Mm. left. Um, And the last one has less than 100 tickets left. That's like two weeks away. So um, if you want to get tickets, you should book them in advance. Mm -hmm. And thanks to everyone who's come to support our solo shows um, and got a legend badge. Legend badge. If you keep your ticket stubs. We're running out of legend badges. We We are running out. Loads of you have been doing it. I know, yeah. Yeah, um, we didn't think that many people would do it, but it turns out you guys fucking love a badge. (laughs) Um, So thank you so much for supporting us. It's really, really kind of you. So we're sat here in bed. That is the raw... Of the Edinburgh Street. I swear you are. This city has gone to the dogs <laughs> because it's constant sirens. This city is either on fire, being yeah. burgled, it's, or being resuscitated at any one it's point. It's bad, isn't it? Really the bad. The noise is bad. It's like something absolutely dreadful is happening every 10 minutes. It is, it's improv. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. <laughs> oh, um, man. I got my car broken into, which was quite harrowing. But, guys, I I fulfilled a lifelong dream because I got to bollock a policeman. <laughs> so I got there, this policeman was like, we've got an urgent lead, can you meet me down at the car? So I was is like, that what you said? Yeah, like, I've got to fucking tuck and roll out the door, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I went down um, so I was like fucking fine so I like ran over there it's like 20 minutes away so I ran over and uh, got there there's someone standing by my car can't be a police officer because he's in jeans with a rucksack and a gilet he's clearly on a French exchange trip and then I got there and he was like are you the owner of this and I was like yeah what are you he's like I'm a police officer I'll show you my card and I was like okay <laughs> he looked like younger than me which always puts me off I know it's bad that isn't it it's, you, you really do it does put you off slightly doesn't it yeah it's bad it's ageist I, I mean it is but I don't want a police officer who can't remember remember Jurassic Park <laughs> so yeah so he's there so I'm sat there in the back of my car all my stuff is everywhere they've smashed the window they've stolen they're just after the loose change they've done it with 18 cars on that street right and uh, I just sat there looking at all my stuff strewn everywhere and be like god this is a fucking ball like I could do without while I'm up here just feeling really sad. And then he goes, how long has it been parked here? I said, oh, you know, a couple of days. He said, well, how comes it here? And I said, I was just leaving it here to park during the festival. I thought it'd be safe. And he went, actually, Edinburgh is a really safe city. And it's I was you like, that's the problem. Well, yeah, he was like, it is a really safe city. And I was like, is it? Like, I'm sat here surrounded by broken glass, right? And uh, he goes, he goes, yeah, actually, statistically, it's really safe. You know, what you have sometimes is some kind of areas, and in certain areas, there'll be certain things. I went, I'm going to stop you there. You must have been trained how to deal with people who have been a victim of crime. Can you see how when I'm sat here in my car with a smashed-in window, telling me that where I am is a very <laughs> safe place is not the right thing to do? And then he just silently nodded at me. And I was like, great. Do you need my postcode? <laughs> like, it yeah, really fucking wound me up. So that's that's it. So that's the police. You've They're... been getting pissed off with the people you share a dressing room with. Yeah. There's there's some cracking people in my dressing room. Tom Walker, Australian comedian, brilliant. Get on with him like a house on fire. Now, tonight, we have we have, diff- we have tables each. It's a huge dressing room. And uh, I, people have been, someone's been on my table. And I've let it go twice. And tonight, I was like, I'm not having this. Someone has literally ruffled my feathers because my feather cape had been moved. <laughs> so there was um, adhesive all over the desk as well. Adhesive? Adhesive. Glue? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, what's this shit? So I had to clean it all up. And Just so you know, Rachel's got a timer on for a chicken in the <laughs> oven right now. I said... So Tom Walker came in. I said, seen the state of this? I said, I'll tell you this will be. It'll be Bumper Blighton. <laughs> The Enid Blyton show that's on in the afternoon. This, he went, of course it's Bumper Blyton. Everyone else was in agreement. I said, if this doesn't... I put a note on it. 
I said, if this doesn't stop, it'll be five go to hospital. <laughs> anyway, turns out it wasn't Bumper Blighton. <laughs> turns out it was Queen Cunt, who were two women who do a, a, a show after me, who were absolutely delightful. I finished my show, I came in, they were cleaning the table like there was no tomorrow. And Isn't I that went, nominative determinism? <laughs> I went, come on. I said, of all people, it was you. He was like, we're sorry, we're so sorry. I was like, that's okay, don't do it again. I said, but you know what? I went straight for the geeks, straight for Bumper Blighton. I um, turned everyone against them. <laughs> well, I was knocking around in your green room, wasn't I, waiting to go to the late oh, yeah. show? And I was in there just keeping myself to myself, um, drinking from the water cooler. We should really crack on with this. Oh, yeah, we should really. Yeah, I'll tell you this quickly. And there was an objectionable actress prow- <laughs> fucking prowling around the place. So this is at, like, half past ten at night. And a guy's on a ukulele, which I went oh. to stuff up his pipe. And he's singing... Um, is it Bruno Mars or something like that? Mm, Fuck knows. Singing that. Whatever it is every cunt learns on the fucking ukulele anyway. So he's singing that. She starts singing along with, like, harmonising with him... I was like, this is too much. And she went, we should do vocal warm-ups together. And I I wanted to be like, shut your fucking mouth and go back to obscurity where you belong. And then he was like, yeah, that would be really cool. And she's like, I'd be really up for that if you ever wanted to do vocal warm-ups together. And then they started singing together and I nearly ran into the wall as fast as I could. Does no one fuck at this festival anymore? (laughs) Is that what people do now? (laughs) Is nobody banging anybody? Is that all it is now? Right, so we are doing the Casanova Killer. Sorry about all that. That's seven minutes of bullshit. Um, I should check my chicken in a minute. <laughs> that's a good rule for anyone at home. Check your chicken. Do you want to pause? Every while? few weeks. Check my chicken. Do you want to pause it? I'll check my chicken. I'll, I'll pause it, right. I'm going to unpause it while she's checking her chicken to tell you about... I've got a dressing room, um, and it's fucking tiny, and it's basically a storage room, and Trump Leah who believes that that is a good enough idea to come up to the fringe with. I'm sure it's fine, but they've got a massive table there. And on the first day, the venue manager was like, um, they've asked that no one touches their props. I was like, right, I wasn't going to do that anyway. She says, yeah, I know that. And I told them to leave a sign, but they said, if we leave a sign, everyone will think we're dicks. And I was like, I think they're dicks for telling you to tell me. And she's like, I tried to tell them that. Anyway, they've got a fucking sign. They're drawn on some white duct tape on the wall and it goes, please, can no one eat near our set? Or, in fact, eat any food backstage. Fuck you. I'm going to do whatever I want there, so I'm going to rub my fanny on it next time I'm in there. I mean, Rachel will probably cut this out, and it's probably for the best. Sorry, Trump Leah, but your fucking duct tape sign can fuck right off. So, you're pleased to know the chicken was great. We paused it. (laughs) It's ready. So we're doing a Casanova killer, which is John Paul Knowles. This was suggested by someone who um, entered my weird little raffle. I did to raise money for every month of Manchester. And what I did for that was I let someone pick uh, someone to, for us to do for mm-hmm. an episode. So Laura Gingell um, picked John Paul Knowles. So it's quite a, oh, it's quite a bleak one, isn't it? It's yeah. a tricky one. Yeah, it's, I, it's technically spree. I mean, we've let a few through, haven't we? Yeah, July 26, 1974 to November 21st, 19, July 21st, no. Come on, mate. July 26, 1974 to November Beyond 21st. Beyond Blighton would get this right, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Dad's got a head like a ping pong ball. Dad's got a head like a ping pong ball. <coughs> oh, Jesus. I wonder if they cut the racism out. <laughs> so, he's technically a spree, but we'll let it in. April 20th, it was born uh, April the 25th, 1946. I've got April 14th, that's our first discrepancy. Yeah. He was born in April 1946 yeah. in Florida. So known as Casanova Killer, he also called himself uh, Daryl Gates and Daryl Golden. They're nothing like Daryl Golden. Daryl Golden sounds like um, like a game show host. I'm like, and here's your host, Daryl <laughs> Golden. <laughs> And then you find out he's got historic sex crimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, his childhood. I've got quite a lot of this. Apparently, he had a like massive problem with authority when he was growing up. And if he ever got bollocked, he'd just be furious. Which, I can't tell you how much that resonates with me. Um, and he'd idolise criminals uh, who would, like... He'd read about or see on telly that travel the country. And especially if they had, like, a massive shootout that led... To the end of their sort of like criminal career, he thought it was really glamorous. He fancies himself a bit of a James Dean, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he said he was like, 
oh, it just resonated that they were as famous as actors. Which is actually, if you think about it now, if they have school shootings, they don't. They mm-hmm. try not to name the shooter, don't they? They they focus on the victims because they you know they are glorifying them if they're running their picture in their name all the time. So he didn't do his homework. You know, like he always answered back. He stole, which all sounds like normal mm. kid stuff actually. Until. But uh, he punched a girl in the face who knocked him back. Which I mean, alarm bells there. Definitely. He got involved with petty theft, sort of car theft, and he held a police officer hostage as well, didn't he? Yeah, but there's... So he's just got this reputation in school for going into a fucking rage, if anything wound him up. And it got him, like, this attention and, like, this reputation of being, like, a bit of a maniac, but being like, oh, let's wind him up and let's see what he does. A bit like Dharma, actually, that Mm. they're like, oh, let's see what he does. So he, he's in and out of this Florida school for boys, which is a reform school. And reform schools just sound like awful places. Yeah, this one had a bit of reputation, though, because there was rumours of torture and even murder. Yeah, you know, uh, the, yeah. so it has this massive history of abusing the boys who go there. And, yeah, and, like, if there's a fucking rumour that there's a school that murders people... Mm. Check it out. Check it out, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, like, if there is a rumour about a school where they're bumping off kids... Uh, check in probably it, see what's going on yeah probably do a to do, do a walk around twice a year at least so he, he was like he loved being the centre of attention and he was really egged on by his peers to be this sort of like wild mm. kind of aggressive difficult guy and then he, yeah he's in and out of jail um, at seven he stole a bike at 19 he was stealing cars and he took a police officer hostage why fucking not I mean, if you turn up and he's in a gilet and a rucksack, that's the fucking least he deserves. <laughs> he's so... Uh, I know, is it unprofessional? I don't know what kind of copper he was. It's I don't casual, know what, isn't it? He also said to me, he brought me there and he's like, OK, I can't use my phone on duty, so can you use your camera phone to take a picture of the, the damage? And I was like, is this a joke? And he was like, no, I can't use my phone. I went, well, the fucking camera on mine's broken. I can only do it on, like, the selfie camera. So I had to do a selfie of the damage on my own car. Does he not have... A work phone? I Mate, he barely had a fucking brain cell. They're not going to give him a phone contract. It was just infuriating and didn't help my um, tolerant attitude towards the police. <laughs> so basically, they when he got to about 19, he was spending six months of every year in jail. Um, in that somebody who t- holidays abroad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like for tax reasons. Yeah. Three I swear some, meals a day. I had some mates who did that. They went and they worked on the jet skis on cruise ships. Oh, yeah. Um, and then they're out of the country so they don't have to pay tax. Yeah, you, you get a good wedge for that, don't you? Get loads yeah. of money put in, like, fat British old people on a jet ski. It's a long time, though, isn't it? It is a long time. Also, I think cruises seem like hell on earth. Or do, I've, I've always wanted to go on one. I no. Mean, yeah, I'd love one. No. Depends who you're with. I'd I Titanic it myself. <laughs> it depends I'd... who you're with. It would be awful if you're with somebody that you realise you don't want to be there with them. At sea. Oh, God. At sea. I'd throw myself over the edge. I think they're quite romantic, though, cruises. Fuck off. I do. I've got, what is Are you, it's like Brexit on the sea. I'd love to... I'll tell you what I'd love. I'd love to be with somebody that likes one dead fit and you have one of those balconies that overlooks the sea. That's a beach, is what you're describing. Yeah, but at sea, moving. I don't want to be on the anything moving. technology. It's not that, though, the, is it? The, the wondrous thing that is a ship cutting through the ocean, banging with a window open. You can't do that. I mean, you could. They're, not, they're all on hearing aids, aren't they? <laughs> Them whistling down below. But it's just a load of old people on a ship, and then it's all, like, really, like, fake, posh, and, like, all those... Oh, my God, have I told you about... I must have told you this. When I went on holiday to Cuba, and it was, like, all-inclusive, so they're just constantly trying to entertain you because you're stuck on a resort... <laughs> I didn't tell you about this. I've talked about this on the podcast before. So they're like, every now and then, everyone's sat around, this this shit music on loop, right? Just sunbathing, minding their own business, trying to... I was reading a book about economics, so it was very dense, right? And I was on holiday with my ex, and he's, like, going up to the swim-up bar, all that kind of stuff. So about fucking four times a day, they're like... Hello, for the birthday. Thank you so much for coming here today. And they're like yelling. I mean, that's a very bad accent. And they're like, okay, everybody. And like the the English is amazing. It's way better than my what Cuban. I don't know what they speak Spanish. Spanish, I think. Yeah. Sure. So, like, uh, everybody. Now we're gonna do yoga. Please be fun. Don't be crazy. Come play with us. <laughs> and I'm just like ignoring it. And they're just constantly like trying to get people to either do yoga 
or like aqua aerobics and they're like yes we gonna have fun times together please yes thank you please come play with us okay okay and then like five minutes later they come back on it and then they'd be like they'd pump the music up again <laughs> and then they'd be like okay five minutes now time now we all have fun in the water yes please you yes nice man with smile you come have fun don't be crazy don't be lazy and just that fucking five times a day don't be crazy don't but like I mean that I, don't, I um, it sounds more offensive than it is but like because they're ama- the English is amazing but they're obviously just being like reps being like come on you know they're trying to rile it up in their second language <laughs> so she's just like talk- she's just using positive affirmation blaring it out across this fucking horrible pool oh god it was awful it was awful was it not a nice resort uh, I don't I don't think I like resorts. I think it feels really sanitised and the food's shit. <laughs> oh, the food's bad. I've, I must have told you when I went on that coach trip in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> I'm not so what sure. a fucking... Well, there's two worlds meeting, isn't there? Dominican Republic, amazing. On a coach, though. Oh, we were going to the island where they filmed the bounty advert. Right. We were going on, like, a boat trip, so we had to go through. So this guy, Julio, it was the tiniest coach. I might have told this. The tiniest coach I've been on in my life. So small that when I stood up, I banged my head. I was like, what is this? Anyway, Julio, the tour, tour guide, was... We went through the real Dominican Republic, of which I looked out the window and I saw two men uh, coercing two cockerels to fight. Fucking um, hell! About several strip clubs in the middle of nowhere. Um, then we got to... Julio was a lovely man, and he was very interesting, and he was ever so handsome on the coach, right? We got off the coach, and he aged 40 years. What? So me and my boyfriend at the time, I went... I looked at him and he went, uh, he went, how come Julio was gorgeous on the coach <laughs> and now he's an old man? I went, I don't know. I think the lighting was really good on the coach. He went, Honest to God, it was like, it was a different person. And it totally baffled me for the whole thing. And then we went... Are you sure you went in a TARDIS? It was a very strange day. We went on a... We went to pick up some starfish from the sea, which I didn't like because I think think it was cruel. Yeah, it doesn't sound Uh, fair. And then we went to the Bounty Island where they filmed the Bounty advert all those years ago, which was delightful. And then had... I was talking about this to my mate today. Went on a catamaran, which was one of the most terrifying experiences (laughs) of my life. Really? Couldn't relax. Couldn't relax it because it's netting. And people have the mobile phones out taking pictures. And all I kept thinking was, they're going to drop the phone. The phone's going to go in the sea. Good, good. It just made me on edge. Didn't enjoy it at all. I mean, I'd go back, but (laughs) I wouldn't do the catamaran. Anyway. Yeah, we digress. Jesus, come on, this is bad for us. And just to give you some context, we're recording this, yes, at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival at, uh, it is 23.44, so... It's too late for the tea, innit? Yeah, it's too late to have a fucking chicken, mate. I'm sat in bed eating strawberries like I... Like I'm having a nervous breakdown. So he marries um, Jackie Knight. He was like, right, I'm going to go straight now I'm with her. But it didn't pan out the relationship. But it ended quite well. He had a good relationship with her. It didn't end acrimoniously. Um, Yeah, imagine that. Um, Uh And then he got put in prison. He was in Rayford. And he began writing to a Californian divorcee, Angela Kovic. Mm Mm-hmm. She decided to pay for his legal counsel so he could try and get released, so they could be together. And he actually proposed to her when she visited him, and he, she said, yes, why wouldn't you? And uh, <laughs> she was paying for it. He actually got released. And in between this, Angela goes to see a psychic who said to her that there was a man in her life who was a dangerous influence. And on this advice, she called off the wedding. Who would action anything from a psychic? Well, I told you my psychic story, didn't I? Yeah, and I've told you fucking been warned off angels. But, like, if a psychic... If a psychic... I was pulling into a pay and display car park and they handed me a parking ticket and go, there's two hours left on this... I'd be like, no, I'm all right. <laughs> like, I would, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't take anything off them, no. let alone fucking life advice. Although, to be fair... They were bang on the money here. She was very good. Maybe we found the only accurate psychic in the um, yeah, she in was the world. Good. So he goes to San Francisco to visit her. He was really like, I, I've got, I do feel for him here. It's annoying because this is how they sort of uh, they blame it on her when it obviously isn't her fault. But he like really loved her. He, when they got together, because um, you know she was raising all this money to get him released. He started taking college classes. And he was like, right, I'm going to fucking sort my life out. He was, like, it did mm. seem like he was trying. 
um, and he was looking for a job as a sign painter for when he left. And he wanted to move to San Francisco because he was worried that if he moved back to Florida, all the people who were like a bad influence mm. on him would still make him go off the rails. So he's like, no, I'm going to get a fresh new start. Well, I mean, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt here. However, he doesn't handle this very well. What would you do if you were doing college courses in... Uh, I'd fucking love to go to prison. I'd do a philosophy degree. I'd finish my psychology degree. Oh, I'd, uh, I'd learn French. I'd probably do something creative. Go les. I think... <laughs> I think All the I'd, things I've always wanted to do. I think I'd probably go... I'd, I'd probably do, like, art or something like that. I'm dog shit at art. I am as well, but... Actually, I'm not too bad, but... I feel like you're good. I'm all right. I, if I got a bit more confident, I think it could probably be, you know, I don't know. Why don't you draw a picture of me and we'll Money. put it on the Facebook page? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll draw a picture of you and put it on you. Okay, it's okay. going to be the fences I've ever seen, isn't it? <laughs> I'll draw one of you as well. Okay. Oh, God, this is going to be terrible. It's got to be better it? than the ones the noise next door did of us. Yours is very cute. You just had a bonkai. Yeah. Mine was fit, that's why it didn't look like me. It felt like it was an insult, that. <laughs> uh, lovely lads, though. Really nice lads. So, he's released on May 1974 for parole. And as soon as he's released, she calls off the engagement, which is quite brutal, isn't it? It doesn't deal with it well. No. He claims that the night in San Francisco where she called off the, the relationship, he claims to have killed three people. Which is... I think that's a bit of a reach because, I mean, either we believe... So he, here's where I am with that. He might have lied about it. He, it might be true. And if it's true, it's fucking mad to go from killing no one to three people in one night. Yeah. If that is the case, it chances are he killed someone before. Yeah. Would you say that's fair? I'd say so, yeah. He's probably has killed somebody before. Hmm. Probably. But he, I mean, he was, uh, you know, keen to claim stuff he hadn't done. So who knows? Now, he blamed her rejection for those murders, yeah. which is always a sign of a solid gold guy. Yeah. Blame the woman, you fucking... Yeah, oh, it's God. not... This is such a noisy city. Mm, it's not her fault. It's not. And you know what? It's not... Not everything is fucking women's fault. I know the Bible teaches us that. <laughs> and like, I'm just very sick of this at the moment. And, like, incels, I find terrifying. Ugh. Do you know what? I'm obsessed with incels, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with sniffing them out. <laughs> I am. I'm obsessed with them. I hate them. I hate them. If you're an incel and you listen to this... No, they won't listen to this. Well, I hate it's women, women that... talking about their <laughs> yeah. sexuality. Constantly talking about cocks. Yeah, I hate them. I hate them. Also, I'm getting tired of men on the internet. Like, Twitter. I keep blocking people now. Yeah, we get... Cross me once. A lot. Cross me once. I'm done now. I blocked someone the other day. Not interested. And your, your little jokes that aren't funny. Yeah, it just gets... I think I think what's hard is that, like... I think people think they're having a joke, but they don't realise that we'll get, like, 50 things a day telling us, trying to put us in our place in a jokey mm. way. Added to that, you've got to deal with everything in your normal life and, you know, like, your mates who know you well and where the boundaries are. So, you know, I think people think we might be being sensitive sometimes or women on the internet might be sensitive, but, like, I think you know, I need to understand the volume between Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, which... Obviously, no one. We don't have to be on there, but I reckon we should be allowed to be on there and just have like a yeah. bare minimum of respect. Well, it's funny because I, I love blokes. Don't get me wrong, love the fellas. But usually, when I get a comment and it's a female, it doesn't irritate me. Men, cert, not all men, obviously. <laughs> certain men, <laughs> certain gentlemen, seem to take it upon themselves to try and patronise all the time, and that doesn't wash with me. Women don't really patronise. Yeah, my general interactions is women saying nice things about me and men saying either weird stuff or jokes at my expense. Yeah, and ultimately we're never going to fuck you. <laughs> don't know that, mate. No. Nope. Might be an incel just waiting for you to take care of them on the other side of this <laughs> podcast. Just waiting for Fairman to... No, thank you. ...pop a dinner Whichever no, hole no. she fancies, actually. Oh, here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. No, here I'm, I'm, go. I'm being... Uh, I'm sensible now, me. Are you? Yeah, man. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? I've been... I've been a bloody paragon of virtue. You have, for, actually, yeah. For the past few months. Your hymen love growing back while you're I here. I know! <laughs> I've been, you know, I'm being very... I've, I've not... I've hardly been out. I've had a couple of... I've not been pissed. You have been oh, pissed. Oh, one, one night. You have been pissed. You showed me a picture of you walking through the streets with a McDonald's oh, that, sweat. Yeah, but that was one night. Out of all the nights I've been here, I've been here nearly a month. One, <laughs> no, we one haven't. Big night. Been here we've two been weeks. Here since the 28th of July. 
It's another three weeks. Yeah, it's nearly three weeks. No, it's not. Shut up. <laughs> I've, had, I've had one night where I've got hammered. I ain't got time. She ain't got time. There's one good-looking bloke at this festival, and oh, he's yeah, unavailable. We all know about that, yeah. So on we go. The first confirmed murder. Yes, this was 26th of July, 1974. Uh, these are brutal, by the way. So yeah, strap him. This is quite hard now. So he escapes from prison where he'd been in a bar fight and he stabbed a bartender. Now, he managed to escape from... I've wanted to fucking stab a lot of members of bar stuff over the years. I, I hear his pain there. In the northern quarter. Yeah. Don't roll your eyes at me, you fucking piece of shit. Oh, what was it? I described that the bar stuff as when we did a previous guy, the feckless. Because they, were, <laughs> they weren't up with her. No. Absolutely ridiculous. So he managed to pick the lock at this prison that he was put in. Because he was put in a prison in 1918, <laughs> by the sounds of it. And this was the first confirmed murder. So 26th of July, 1974, he broke into 65-year-old Alice Curtis's house and he bound and gagged her and he stole her car and money. It's horrible, this, but this is what happened. She choked to death while she was gagged on her own dentures. And it, it's horrible. Yeah. Now, what they think about that is... He gagged her to stop her from shouting while he was burgling the place. And her mm. death was actually an accident. Oh. That she just choked on her dentures, which is... It's horrible. Like, it's so fucking sad and shit. What a shitty way to go. Not only have you got false teeth, that's going to be the thing that fucking kills oh. you. It was... Um, the car that he stole was a Dodge Demon. A yellow one. A yellow. Don't draw 19, attention to yourself. 1971. Well, they thought, apparently, that he was obviously like, fuck, if I... I can't come forward about this because I'm going to go to jail again. And now it's fucking manslaughter. So he's like, I better just double down on this shit. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go on the run like all those criminals he used to look up to when he was growing up. So he gets in his car and fucks right off. Now, the police connected him to the crime and his picture was on the telly, Mm -hmm. as was the car. Um, Also, people were saying, like, it was good... Because Cass and Overkill, it was good-looking... He really wasn't. God, he was awful. Like, not even... No. He's... Yeah, he's terrible. He looks really sick. Yeah. He looks like he needs some vegetables. Yeah. He looks like it. everyone at this festival yeah, at this absolutely. point. Yeah, absolutely. You're like, well, get some vitamin D in Don't your life. spotty, actually. Not spot there. I've got a spot here. I've come on the rag, though, and I so it's going to happen. And um, so he used to keep these trophies... And uh, the car was one of them. So he fucks off in this car, and then but he realises, shit, they know what the car looks like. It's very distinct. They've got my picture going everywhere. So he jumps the, jumps the state um, and then dumps the car. Now, while he's in the car, he, ta- has, he gets a tape recorder and he starts to document his confessions, driving around like fucking Hunter S. Thompson talking into a tape recorder. My dentist used to do that. What? He used to have a... Mr. Rabbit, my old dentist, he used to have a... a Dictaphone. Dictaphone. And uh, he'd go, uh, such, uh, whatever one, back molar, partially erupted, uh, blah, 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 and he used to keep it on. <laughs> Isn't that what a dental nurse is for, to, to t- translate all that? Oh, yeah, maybe you wrote it on there and they typed it up. No, because he normally says it and the dental nurse makes a note of it. Oh, yeah. Did he I have know. a dental nurse? Not that I remember, no. Well, that's why he's got a dictaphone, isn't it, mate? Well, and this is why he could afford to leave his dental practice and go around the world on his yacht. Oh, yeah, because he's saving a wage. Yeah. Wow. Me. Goodness me. Best dentist the world has ever seen. <laughs> really? He was good. Mine, uh, I had a really good one, and, and there was always a Welsh Welsh stuff on the ceiling. Oh, on the ceiling, the posters. Yeah. What did you have for posters on your ceiling? Uh, Mr Abbott didn't have any, but my... He's really cutting corners I up know, that, didn't he? but my dentist now, uh, Costas... He um, has a map of the world. Oh, that's quite good. Yeah. Um, I there was a a poem called "Daiki uh, with It's about two dogs who get new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a poem in Welsh, and there was a thing of all dog loads of dog breeds. Oh, that's it's great. great. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's a way to while away twenty minutes, isn't it? Having said that, he was my dentist for so long that I only say three years ago my new dentist Costas, who's lovely. Uh, my nieces think he's the best thing in the world. It's so bizarre. I mean, you've said his name a lot. Yeah, well, they... they <laughs> my mum was saying, like, she took my nieces to see... The, to go to the dentist. And she said... And he comes out and he goes, Hey, kids! And they're like, Costas! <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> I don't understand it. Anyway, uh, I was... 
I didn't know that that was an actual thing, that dentists put things on the ceiling that you could look at. So that was first my first experience of it. Well, yeah, because your other one was cutting the corners. One, yeah. It was on a budget. Um, so... So, basically, this is one... Th- Do you think he, we think he wore a shark tooth necklace, this guy, don't we? Yeah, he thinks he's so cool. Yeah. But he's really not. So he's driving around in this fucking yellow thing, giving his uh, confessions into a tape recorder. He'd be one of those people who acts like they're on telly all the time. Mm. Do you know those people? I was telling you, there's a reviewer up here who's like that. Um. Who always acts like he's filming his own programme. <laughs> like, there's a camera on him. Hey. Hey. He's like, hey... Like, shrugging every time. Oh, fuck off, mate. His review's not out yet, so that's not bare grapes yet. Um, Mm -hmm. So he stole these trophies. Carl was one of them. But he used to give the trophies to his ex-wife as well, Mm. which is pretty dark. I hate it when they give stuff to the women and they're like, I I just don't like it, I don't like it. Um, So... There's no particular MO with him either because... All over the shop, innit? He'd kill anybody. So he did rape and murder his female victims. He used to strangle them with their own stockings and they found a lot of men that he'd murdered in the nude. Gay guys. Gay guys. Gay guys he, that he murdered, he would pose them nude and it was, it was yeah, an ever-changing MO. And um, now what's really interesting is he never killed young boys even if they witnessed crimes. And they think it's because he, those kids reminded him of him as a kid when he was particularly lost. Um, and... He would, yeah, like I say, he'd evolve his MO to sort of, uh, you know, like, leave a cold trail. And he wouldn't kill writers. So oh, yeah, this... Barbara Tucker and Sandy Forks both got away from him. They both had, like, a, you know, like, an encounter with him and got away with it. Uh, and they think it's because they... <laughs> he wanted them to write about him and ensure his fame later on, which is... Some real fucking egotistical yeah. bullshit, isn't it? Absolutely. And also, if you're going to kill anyone, kill writers. Ugh. I'm fucking sick of them after this fringe. <laughs> I'm what reviewers are just writers in general? I'm sick of journalists. I've never had that thing before. I was like, oh, they're fine, the ones I've met, but I've been absolutely fucking shafted by some journalists uh, this this year. So got to chase a story. So... What he says, he does decide that he needs to get rid of the car because it is very conspicuous and it can be traced back. Now, he decides to get rid of the car. He abandons it on a street. Two little girls, Lillian and Milette Anderson. Uh, Lillian's 11 and Milette is 7. They're acquaintances of his family, which is strange because his family don't exist. So (laughs) he sees that they see him and he's scared that they can identify him. And he murders because they know who yeah, he is. Because yeah. they know who he is, and they see him with a car. Really, they, I don't think they would have thought anything. I think they'd have just. I don't know if they went around asking questions, and it's a really distinct car, isn't it? Um, but yeah, he's still. It's horrible. Didn't need to so do he, that. he kidnapped and strangled them, and he buried them in a nearby swamp, which is just a horrific murder. I mean, they're all horrible, but that to me, and I know it's an awful thing to say because I hate thinking about things like this. I just think one of those poor kids would have had to see the other one being murdered. And know it was coming, and it it just is di- just disgusting, isn't it? It's horrible. It's it's really sad. I I, I um yeah. I, I just think it must have been so fucking scary. And there only only kids, weren't they? He says that soon after this, he killed a teenager who he met hitchhiking, and she wasn't identified for a very long time. But in two thousand eleven, she was identified as thirteen year old Ima Jean Sanders who had run away from Beaumont in Texas in 1974. That's so fucking sad that she's killed, what, in this, like, 70s? Yeah. And that it would take till 2011. And it's she's fucking 13, she's a baby. It's horrible. Horrible. So the day after he'd murdered the two sisters, he, Marjorie Howie, who was 49 years old, she lived in Atlantic Beach, she had met him and she invited it. She either invited him in or he forced his way into her flat and he strangled her. And he stole her television and gave it to his ex-girlfriend. Jesus fucking Christ. So he he cracks on, because August the 23rd, uh, Cathy Sue Pierce, he forced his way into her home, which was in Marcella in Georgia, and he strangled her. Now, this is where he left her three-year-old son unharmed. Mm. Um, That's weird, that, isn't it? Because do you think it is that it reminded him of him, or do you think it was just like, he's a three-year-old, what the fuck is he going to do? Well, he'd murder a seven-year-old girl. Yeah, yeah. Would it have been... Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it is that. Ugh. But, you know, either that way. poor fucking kid. Like, 
three, I reckon, is young enough to have memories. Yeah, I think of... so. But also, the the mum's there and the kid... Oh, just... That's what I mean, is, like, Ugh. he'll... He might remember stuff. He might just about remember when he's older what his mum's like, but not... Oh, yeah, it's See, it, really it, sad. Hate the, I mean, I hate all these murders. I don't like any of them. But these remind me of BTK. They give me that same horrible... Oof. Like, you know, home invasion. Home invasions, yeah, and Ramirez. It's terrifying, isn't it, just because your home's where you're safe. Oh, speaking of it, I didn't feel very safe in my own room last night, did I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Friend of the show, Will Duggan, stayed with us, didn't he? Yeah. And uh, I've had a lovely time. He's been up at the Edinburgh Fringe, been hanging out with Will and his family. They're delightful. He had a couple of drinks last night, and he, I wasn't... I had a couple. I wasn't pissed. He came to stay with us, and he said... Uh, he was going to stay in here, wasn't he, on the, on the sofa? Yeah. He said, oh, no, can I stay on the floor in your room? I said, yes, if you want. He wanted to watch YouTube. <laughs> so we were watching YouTube. I'm in bed. He's lying on the floor. We're chatting like we're having a sleepover. I was like, I need to go to bed, Will. I'm not 14. I woke up this morning, probably about quarter to seven. Will Duggan, topless, <laughs> his hands on my bed going, Rachel, wake up. I was like, what, what, what? He went, sorry, I forgot where I was for a moment. And then went back to sleep. <laughs> where did he think he was? Like fucking I... in the trenches of World War II? <laughs> no idea. Rachel, wake up, the Germans are here. <laughs> no idea where he thought he was. <laughs> but it was such a, a shock. How you need to... I wouldn't want to wake up... <laughs> Seeing Will's face, let alone yelling in my face, going, "You need to wake up." He's got Will's got such a um, friend of the show. Will Duggan has such a when he takes his glasses off, he's got such like soft feminine eyes. <laughs> Don't you think? Uh, he's got quite long eyelashes, certainly. Yeah, yeah, he's got like really feminine like features. He looks quite cute when he's not got his glasses on. He looks like a little. If you're gonna draw like you know on your hand, a little face with pretty eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and use them. Use your thumb as the mouth. He looks like one of them. Doesn't he does, he? doesn't he? I've got it. Hope he doesn't listen anymore. I, oh, he does. Uh, yeah, in fact, if we don't mention him in episodes, he gets upset. Oh, what an absolute penis. He's a, there's a picture of Will that I have on my phone that I always look at uh, to cheer me up if I feel sad. But it's Will as a baby. Oh, yeah, And it funny. just cracks me up. In fact, we'll ask him if we can put it on the page. Yeah, it's, it's a good... proper funner. You send me that a lot. Oh, I love it. I love it. Really cheers me up. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, enough about Will. September the 3rd, 1974, Scott's in Lima, Ohio. He's getting around. He really is doing the miles. He meets William Bates, a 32-year-old accountant for Ohio Power Company. And I guess they just get chatting, don't they? And his, Bates' his wife, he doesn't come home, so she's worried she reports him missing. Now, the police, they find Alice Curtis's car. And then in October, they find Bates's body and he'd been strangled and dumped in the forest. Oof. Now, he's they found Alice Curtis's car, so he st- murdered Bates to steal his car. Mm. And in Eli, Nevada... God, he is really getting around. This is awful. I mean, they're all awful and he's so random with what he does. Yeah. So he steals his car, he goes to Eli, Nevada. This is September the 18th, 1974. He goes to a campsite. Why? We hate <laughs> We were discussing this, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, I can't stand I, camping. I can't, be doing, I, I can't deal with it. I don't think I ever liked it, and nope. now I'm 31, it's just done it's, for me. It's the heat of the tent. Here's being in a fucking tent, right? Freezing your tits off thinking you're going to die, being like, like fucking Scott the Antarctica, maybe some time, right? <laughs> Lying there in a tent, freezing. Your nipples are so hard they start aching. <laughs> And then you're just trying to pass out. That's why people get pissed at festivals. So you can pass out. You're in the sleeping bag. You're trying to get your feet like box of ice. And then you eventually fall asleep. You wake up a few more times because you're so cold. And then you wake up having a panic attack, trying to run out of your sleeping bag because it's hotter than the sun. Horrendous. Last time I was, I was at Latitude and I hadn't seen my fella for ages, so we we were only going to see each other that weekend. We banged in the morning, you know, when the fucking first thing when the sun's on it, it's the hottest thing ever. And he was like, "Fucking hell, this is like Bikram yoga, <laughs> like sweating everywhere." Oh god, it was awful. I don't think I could slipping around like it's a fucking oh, game show hosted by Keith Jaguar. I, I couldn't engage in couldn't engage in sexual activity in a tent. Yeah, well, I've just got to get it where I can, can't I? I don't really see him anymore. I just couldn't... No. no. I've got a whole bit of stand-up about that that I do at festivals, about um, suck it, like, getting off with people at festivals. Have have you not seen me do this? Where I'm this whole thing about, like, I was like, you've got to have a system, and you do this whole thing about... 
you got to um, you got to cop off with someone by Saturday because you can't do it on Sunday because <laughs> no one has showers and you don't want to. <laughs> no one wants to suck a Sunday dick and that's the sort of thing I do. Yeah, and they always put me on in the afternoon in festivals and I always do that bit. And there's loads of like, come on, let's go to the literature tent. Exactly. Yeah, loads of fucking parents dragging away their kids with those giant pink earphones on. <laughs> Noise cancellers. I must have told this. I went to Leeds Festival in the year 2000. I'm doing Leeds in a few days. Are you? Mm. Is LG on? I don't know. Uh, is it's it everywhere? You're flying down there, yeah? I'm not flying, I'm a uh, train. You get back for your gig? Yeah, just about. Bloody hell. Anyway, so I went to Leeds Festival, the one and only festival I've been to, and I hated every second of it. <laughs> I, I met this bloke, and he was fit, and he had proper oasis hair, he was dead cool. Aviators on. I'm, I think I've told this. Anyway, he didn't yeah. believe how old I was. Asked me for ID. Got off with him. And then took his glasses off and I went, ew. Me. You look like a thousand. Oh my God. Yeah, he was, said that he was hideous. Hideous. Glasses on. Four. I think you've got bad eyesight between him and Julio. In, no, Julio. It was a combined experience. No. So it wasn't just me. Other people had noticed it. Right. So it okay. wasn't just me. I mean, God knows what that was with Julio. <laughs> <laughs> it was bizarre. That's a funny sentence, you know. God knows what that was with Julio. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are we up to? Yes, so, he's camping. He's gone to a campsite. This is horrible. I'm so sorry that this is so horrible. Now, he, he, he'd met two elderly campers. It was totally random. I find that horrible. If you're old, you shouldn't be camping. Oh, I, think I mean, my fucking hip seizes up when I camp. Do you know what I've got to think about? You know those tin mugs that people use for camping? Yeah, they're good. Oh, I like them, yeah. Yeah, I do like a tin got mug. A bit of, I've got a bit of a thing for them. And I might have mentioned this before. I've got a real thing. For Liam Gallagher? No, for um, ugh, knitting, pa- like clothing patterns in packaging. What? I've never mentioned this before. No. Oh, I don't know what it is. Like, so you know when you, you get a clothing pattern and there are those envelopes... And they have the, the paper pattern inside. Right. I, oh, I love feeling them. What? And the smell of them. I think, I think it's a weird fetish. I don't know what it is. Oh, God. I've got a real thing for it. Like, I just... Don't... Just, like, picking up and, like... Oh. What? A, a knitting pattern? Not knitting. It's, it's just specifically, like, the clothing ones with that paper inside. So an actual to... pattern? Yeah, yeah. That you... Stop doing that with your oh, hand. I love it. I love it. There's just something... I love the smell of it. And I love the feel of the packaging. Put that hand away. <laughs> Put that creepy little claw out that you're grasping it, open and close. It's definitely a weird... Bit of it a, has to be. Oh, I love it. You know, people that like whispering. I think that's mine, just holding... That winds me up, that. Holding clothing patterns. I yeah. haven't got anything like that. Oh. Nothing. I find nothing erotic. And I've must have said this before, being late for stuff. What? Have I not told you this? I'm Wait, ne- I, hold on. I'm never late for anything. But if I am... If I happen to be like, I'm going to be late... Makes me a bit oh. juicy. Yeah, and I, I don't know why. I think you have told me that. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. Wouldn't you be late all the time? No, I hate being late. But it's just like, aren't you like? Phew, I'll take the M6 and see how yeah, I get on. It's when it's beyond my control. I'm like, oh, I'm really late here, and there's nothing. It's not my fault. Oh God, I'm going to be twenty minutes late. Oh, oh God, <laughs> get out of my bed! <laughs> don't you get an old fucking. <laughs> Sloppy on these sheets. I love it. Knitting patterns, though. Not knitting patterns, clothing patterns. Oh, I love it. Anyway, so, please don't send me any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so these, it's two elderly campers. We haven't actually got the names. They didn't give us the names. Oh, he, he bound them and he gagged them and he shot them. Fucking Horrible. Man. Now, the police didn't link them with him because they just thought it was a random killing because mm-hmm. it was totally... I mean, he's got no MO anyway. He confessed to it, and uh, he'd used their credit cards for his expenses. Even even bloody serial killers are expenses now. September 21st, 1974, in Seguin. Sequin, mate? Is it Sequin? Sequin, I've Texas. Sequin. No, you've spelled it wrong. Everywhere I've seen it, it's called Sequin, Texas. Oh. Which is the town I am now a mayor of. Um, Sh- Sherlyn Hicks, who was a motorcyclist... He met her, he raped and murdered her, and then dragged her through a barbed wire fence. So what? fucking dark. These are, without a doubt, aside from Richard Ramirez, BTK, and Richard Trenton Chase, some of the worst murders yeah. we've ever discussed. I mean, we've, we've, 
yeah, they're all horrible, but... There's so many of them, and they're so just, like... Oh, I don't know. You know, just that kind of, like, doesn't give a fuck, just whatever. It's just scary. September 23rd, 1974, Birmingham, Alabama, and Dawson. Now, Where's your chicken? It's, in, it's finished cooking. Okay. Um, now, they... Apparently, they liked each other. They met, and they got on for quite a while, because basically, because she was paying for everything... Which seems to happen in a lot of relationships, doesn't it? Mm, um, no comment. <laughs> now, she was paying for everything. It's got quite a short patience span. Is that the right thing? I'm so tired. Yeah. Yeah, he does lose interest real quickly. Yeah, 29th of September, he murdered her and threw her in the Mississippi River. Oh, so fucking disrespectful. This is just like a litany of awful crimes. Marlboro, Connecticut, is going all over the show. This is October the 16th, 1974. Um... Karen Wine and her daughter, Dawn, who was 16 years old. Uh, he bound them and he raped them and he murdered them with a nylon stocking and he stole a tape recorder. October the 18th, Woodford, Virginia, 53-year-old Doris Hoser. He shot her with a husband's rifle. He wiped the rifle down and placed it next to her body. So he was trying to make the it fuck look. is he up to? Now, he still invades his car and he picks up two hitchhikers in Key West in Florida. So again, he's, he's all over the place. Mm. Now, he, he had planned to kill them both, but the police pulled him over for a traffic violation. Oh, yeah. And he panicked and he let them go. Now, this is where he contacts his lawyer and tells him what he's done. Yeah, so he contacts his lawyer, which is Sheldon Yavitz, and he gives him this tape confession and he says, listen, when I'm dead, you can release this and not before. But when he gets caught later on... Um, the police go to his lawyer and they put pressure on him to release the tape, which he does. Your birthday, this one? November the 6th. November the 6th. In Milted Gevel? Yeah, it looks like that. In Georgia. Carswell Carr. He spent uh, the night at Carswell's house and then stabbed them to death and strangled the 15-year-old daughter and tried to engage in necrophilia. Uh, with with a body. Jesus um, Christ. There was... Apparently he couldn't, like, get an erection. And then th- that starts becoming, like, a recurring theme. Mm. That his... He sort of becomes into, impotent and that makes... Yeah, it kind of flies him into a rage as well. There was Edward Hilliard. He was found in the woods. Uh, Debbie Griffin, whose body was never found either. I hate that. November the 8th. He's bar hopping... Which we referred bar to. hopping? On a sesh, mate. Pub crawl? Pub crawl. Yeah, on having it's a... Is that what a bar hop is? Yeah. Of course it is. Must be. Bar hopping. I thought it would be something like you don't pay the bill and you just fuck off. Have you ever done that at a restaurant? I certainly have not. No, I haven't either. I haven't got I, I've almost it. done it by accident. Oh, yeah, we've all done that. And then been completely embarrassed by it. But, no, I, I couldn't... I'd love to do it in, like, somewhere that's... Full of cunts. Yeah. I'd love to do it like that, but no, I, I just I couldn't. No, I've not got it in me. No. I like the idea of it, but only if it was, like, really bad, like bad service. Oh, yeah, and just being like, I'm not paying for Yeah, this. or it was run by a total arsehole. Yeah, or they're taking too long to... I think that sometimes, you know when they take ages for the bill to come, I'm like, I'm just going to walk yeah. out here. I love those bits where you go, we could just go. Yeah. We could, but we're not gonna. What a thrill. It's almost as sexy as being late, isn't it, mate? Oh, isn't it just... Ooh, pass me ooh. that knitting pattern. Ooh. Ooh, the, ooh, the, the petty th- crimes I could commit. Ooh. <laughs> so, he's in Atlanta. I've been to Atlanta. Uh, Hotlanta, they call it. I think I've mentioned this. Do they? Yeah. It's like the worst nickname for anywhere. Hotlanta. Is it because it's home very of hot? Coca-Cola. Yes. Okay. And all the streets are called things like Peach Tree and things like that. Elton John has a house in Atlanta. You know a lot about Atlanta. I know. Did I say it was the home of Coca-Cola? You did say that, did yeah. I? Oh, I'm very tired. Actually, you've only got three things you know about it. That's fine. <laughs> we can pop that on a uh, shelf for now. I had a sandwich called a Rachel no, sandwich. No, you're not, you're not going into fucking sandwich <laughs> facts. I'm not going to let that slide. It was delicious. Um, so, Sandy... What's in a Rachel? 
A lot of love to give. No, that's what's in no, it. it would be a cig butt. <laughs> that's so rude. <laughs> that is so rude. A cigarette butt. It'd be a potato waffle. Oh, yeah, potato waffle, an egg, a cigarette an egg, butt. Bit of main, bit not main. Some eyeliner, cream. bit of eyeliner, and um, a, a sprinkle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> oh, God, that sounds disgusting. It just sounds like something they serve in the Northern Quarter in Manchester. Dear God. Now he met Sandy Forkis. Who said that he was a cross between Robert Redford and Ryan O'Neill? That, oh, yeah. Because she was the one who said he was um, uh, attractively gaunt. And she was the writer who got away. Uh, she was, Yeah, she was British as well, wasn't she? Yeah. Now, they sort of got on, but he was unable to have sex. So he can get these it up, are yeah. where the problems had started. They parted their ways on the 10th of November. And this is where he met Susan McKenzie, who was a friend of Sandy. And he demanded sex at gunpoint from her, and she escaped and told the police. And this is where it all starts going a bit wrong for him, doesn't it? Yes. Um, before that, though, there is West Palm Beach. Devil. Be- now I've got a theory about this one. So Beverly Maybe, mm. who was she was disabled, and he broke into the house. He abducted her sister, stole her car, and drove to Fort Pierce in Florida. Now he dropped off Beverly's sister with. Without any harm, he didn't murder her. I've got a theory about this. I think maybe she had time to speak to him, and maybe she explained that Beverly relied on her to take like care for her and help her. And maybe he just went ah. Maybe he showed a bit of compassion there. That's what I like. Did he kill Beverly though? No. So he didn't kill either of them. So what you think he was just like? I think maybe he was like ah. That's interesting. May, I like to think. No, I don't like to give him the benefit of the doubt. No, I don't. I think there must have been another reason. Well, so, I mean, it's very unlike me to want to see a shred of humanity in something. It's true, that. I've changed me. What's happened to me this festival? <laughs> um, now, November 17th. Yeah, so he's in Florida, and a police officer recognises the stolen car of Beverly, maybe. So he pulls him over, and he straight away takes the police officer hostage. So some classic good policing there. Um, and he drives off in the patrol car. I fucking love the balls of that. <laughs> he uses the siren to stop James Myers in his car, switches the car, so he, he puts the police officer hostage into that, uh, into the James Myers car, puts James Myers in it as well, so he's now got fucking two hostages, and then he drives them out of town and he handcuffs them to a tree in Pulaski County, Georgia. And... You think that's the embarrassment, that's like a stag doing it, but he fucking shoots them in the head as well at close oh, range, me. which is just like... Because I think if, if you're with someone like that that you're just scared of and they handcuff you, you're like, well, at least we'll just... That's what we'll stay here. But, like... And then just fucking executing you is... Ugh. Horrible. So he cries... Then the police are... Police are closing in on him. There's a roadblock and he tries to crash through it and as he does, he just drives the car into a tree... So then he fucking jumps out the car. It's like Marcel (laughs) He jumps out the car and then starts to run. um, And he's getting followed on foot by helicopters and dogs. I don't know how you outrun a dog, for fuck's sake. This is like the most... This is one of the world's wildest police chases. It really is. Yes, it is. But that's sort of how he wanted to go down, isn't it? Um, So then he gets cornered by a civilian with a gun. Hashtag God bless America. (laughs) Um... And then he gets arrested. Uh, so when they interview him, he claims 35 murders, but they only actually ever verify 18. So they think he's a bit of a billy bullshit. So what do you think? I think he is a typical... I think he's a bit of a fantasist. I think, he, he, you know, he's murdered a lot of people, but I think he would like to claim more. So I think he would up that figure. I think he's rounded it up. Yeah, and I think... I mean, this is technically a spree, yeah. but I think, I mean, it had to come, he was never going to get away with it forever, was it? No. Because he wasn't particularly clever. No. Um, but yeah, I think he's probably making it sound like he's got more of a body count than he actually has. Mm. So there was a massive media frenzy when he was arrested, um, and he was terrified of um, the electric chair. Who's really scared of it ever happening to him? I don't think anybody uh, looks forward to that prospect. No, but I mean, he was like of that way of dying. Oh, he was okay. particularly frightened. Ooh. So November eighteenth, 
so he's found guilty of um, those 80 murders. Um, and November 18th, they transfer him to a maximum security prison. And as they're transferring him, he goes to grab the sheriff's revolver that he has on him. And as he goes to grab it, an FBI agent that's there with them, Ron Angel, shoots him in the head. Wow. And loads of the stories are like, so he died how he wanted in a police shootout. And be like, no, he was handcuffed and he was just shot in the head. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's done. So that's him. He's, um... And, the, yeah, the, this mad thing about him being this Casanova killer when he is proper Uggs. He's horrible. Yeah, he's got a weird f- face... He's got that bushy, mad 70s... What were they cutting their hair with in the 70s? A pen knife. Like a feather cut. Yeah, yeah. everyone's got, like, a split... <laughs> everyone's hair pokes out at the end, goes out like a triangle. Anyway. Yeah, he wasn't... Yeah, he wasn't fit, so I stopped saying he was. Stop saying he's sexy, guys. Yeah. Just because someone's got a leather jacket on doesn't mean he's sexy. Pleather jacket. Pleather jacket on doesn't mean he's sexy. Shark's tooth, <laughs> resting on the Adam's apple, pleather jacket, Cuban yeah. heel... Cuban boot like Jean. Oh God. Vest. Boot like Jean. That'd be my um. Boot like Jean. That'd be my stripper name. <laughs> boot like Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is. Boot like Jean. Oh God, that's so funny. <laughs> boot like Jean, the stripper. <laughs> oh God, I can see her. She's got a. Co- oh God. So I went to have a um, a massage the other day about some my um my director of my show went and he said there's a woman who's like okay I'm going to be giving you a massage um, so we're going to be doing a full body blah, 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 explaining it to me and, she, and then she leant down to his ear and went um, just so you know I want you, you know I want you to relax but I am asthmatic so I will be coughing all the way through this <laughs> <laughs> so he, she he was like being massaged and so she'd be like <laughs> was he laughing yeah um, I, he was laughing when he told me I mean, such but he's polite, so polite guy, yeah. he wouldn't have said nothing yeah. I went the other day and uh, so I went to this woman and she's great she's this Spanish woman and she goes but she's fucking full on she's got like this beautiful action she was like um, are you comfortable she always asked me if I'm comfortable um, and I was like yeah that's nice and then she's, and she's like okay I want you to relax best case scenario for me is you fall asleep you will not be offended if you fall asleep I was like okay She's like, so you close your eyes for me and you can breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. I was like, okay. How does it do that? And then this is fucking like whatever music playing in the background. So <laughs> like, anyway, as she's walking around very quietly around the top of me, she fucking kicks the stand out from underneath the headdress. <laughs> so my head goes smashing down. I just think I'm dying. I immediately think I'm dying. <laughs> Why have you not told me this? <laughs> I don't know what I was how, thinking. How have you kept this from me? This is then, like my favourite kind of story. <laughs> so, and she goes, she goes, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> She says, sorry, I make a mistake. I was like, it's okay. But I'm like, that's it then. The whole fucking next two hours of ruin. <laughs> Did he go right down to I'm the as, floor? Yeah, like, so, so basically it was propped up, so I was sort of sat up facing her, and she kicked it away, and it went just flat down. So I thought I was dying. I thought... And then later on she was like, um, she, said, she said, I've got problems with my... Fuck off you. This is brilliant. I love it. I love it. She says, I have problems with my hips, which is true. Um, and then she's like, just working it. And she was like, um, she says, your hips flexes, they're very tight. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, we need to work on this. Because otherwise, your boyfriend, he cannot enjoy you. I was like, I cannot believe she's telling me I'm a bad fuck. And then she was like, and then I was like, I can't believe I'm being fucking body shamed like this. And she's like, can you come in for another session? I was like, yeah, absolutely. How much do I owe you? So I went, I'm going back again. How much does it cost? Um, it was 45 quid for an hour or 65 for an hour and a half. But to be fair, both times she did a two hour massage. <laughs> I would pay 60 quid just to watch you have that table kit from you. Just <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. So funny. It's awful. It's the most stressful thing that. that's ever happened to I me. I love it. I love it. I love Best things case scenario like for me is you'll fall asleep, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> 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 Near death experience straight away. I don't like my To whale music. I've said this before, I like being tickled. I don't like massages at all. I love massages. No. I told you about the time, though, that a, a, a guy did it. I thought he was gay. Um, and I could see his painted... He had his toenails were painted lilac, and I could see that through the, like, hole in the, like, massage thing. Give me. I was like, God, he's very close to my fanny, but it's <laughs> it's fine, isn't it, because he's clearly gay. So I'm kissing a woman outside. <laughs> yeah, so I literally just had a man tugging on my flaps for no fucking reason. And my tits, I was like... I was like Surely you don't need to massage. Your bloody phone is fucking going. Is it, sorry, 
I didn't. I thought it was off. Sorry so, about yeah. that unprofessionalism. Don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, he tugged on my flaps and was basically having a right old go on my tits as well. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is all fine, isn't it? He's a he's a gay gentleman, so <laughs> maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was kissing that woman outside. Maybe that was another sort of like. She'd come in for a hot stone massage. <laughs> he was just trying his Cupping. Look. This is what cupping is. <laughs> well, you cut my balls and you pay for the privilege. I can't get into anything like massage. It's not like that. It's not for me. I fucking love it. I love being touched. I'd rather be stressed. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, right, so that is the Casanova Killer... We'll try and whack another one out of these while we're up here, shall we? Yeah, we are going to try and do that. Thanks to everyone who's bought tickets to everything so far. Mm -hmm. And thanks for spreading the word about America. Very excited about that. Um, Please do buy tickets. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I'm loath to say this because we'll probably get loads of people messaging us. Excuse me, but I saw a brilliant producer, Anna, earlier and she said, we don't need to have a meeting about Australia. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, so... um, I thought, what were you saying? What were you saying? Uh, <laughs> if one more person asks, one more we're not going. Ask me about Australia. We're not going to Australia. It happens today. Every single day, someone goes, "When are you coming to Australia?" Come to Australia. And it's really sweet and it's really great. But also, like, there's only so many times you can be told to go to a country a 24 hour flight away before you think, "I'm not going to go." I am very much looking. If we go to Australia, I will look forward to that immensely. My great grandfather was Australian, and one of my favourite relationships ever was with an Australian. Really? <laughs> yes. Dear me. And look what happened to them both. Both dead. <laughs> both dead. <laughs> Rachel killed them both. Both dead. Thank you so much yeah, for listening. Thank you. And thanks so much for supporting us. Um, we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.